death Your will be done on earth, Lord As it is in heaven, yeah I remember when I was struggling I had to cry sometimes But look at me now The victory is mine When times get hard, y'all Trouble in my way Let your be it I'll praise you always Thank you, Lord Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord I'll just say thank you I want to say thank you, Lord Thank, thank, thank you, Lord. Lord I'll just say thank you Oh, yeah, Lord, I just say thank you. You're so good. To God be the glory. I just want to give thanks always for all the things that God has done for me and, and even for you. You know he did something for you. He got you up on this morning, started you on your way. That's right, he even got that turkey in the oven. Yeah, it smells real good. Oh, yeah, mac and cheese. Oh, my. All of the food is just smelling so good. Well, we hope that you will continue to tune into the broadcast uh, with just your bellies full. That's okay. It's Thanksgiving. So uh, you don't want to be a glutton, but you definitely want to enjoy. For he came that we might have this life and have it more abundantly. Now, there are some of you who have more than enough, and there's others who don't have anything. You ought to share. Oh, uh aha. Yeah, we ought to share with one another. Again, I told you in 2013-2014, uh, we're coming up with some things and we're going to try to get some stuff together so that the Guts Foundation it can indeed uh, provide for the community and become a one to impact the community even as Jesus did. And so we thank God for all of you who will support, who will volunteer, who will come out and be a part of what's going on. We expect to do some great things in 2013. And we hope to be able to have you as supporters. But if you're not a supporter, that's okay, too. We still pray with you and for you because we love you. And we desire that God would bless you uh, beyond measure. That you might begin to realize just how good God is. And that he's worthy of all the glory and the honor and the praise. As long as your life is changed and transformed, that's really the most important thing. That you would have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. That you would become a witness to the Most High God. That, that is worth it all. So we hope that you will uh, be committed to the change and to the challenge. If you don't do anything else, that would be enough for me. And God will deal with the rest. Now... We're in the book of Acts, and we're at uh, 28, and we're at verses 23 through 25. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses, out of the prophets, from morning until evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not, and when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Now, as promised by the Lord, Paul safely arrived and received his opportunity to declare the good news in Rome. I mean, God set him up real, real, real good for a prisoner. At a set time, a huge number of people gathered at Paul's house of confinement and listened as he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. From morning until night, Paul declared Jesus and taught the Jews, confirming the reign or rule of God as set forth in the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And from the Old Testament books of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and others. Some of the people believed, meaning they were persuaded of something. In this instance, it was God's word. But some did not believe. The phrase, some believed not, in the Greek means that they spoke to one another in disagreement. Uh, you know how we do. We can't disagree by ourselves. We can't fall by the wayside by ourselves. we got to always drag somebody with us. This is why I'm saying, instead of dragging somebody with you down, how about dragging somebody up? How about taking somebody to heaven with you? Why, why take people through the sin road, through the bondage, through the... Uh, burdens through the darkness through the despair why not take somebody into the highway which has hope has glory has praise 
is fruitful, is beneficial. It would make such a difference if we ever did. Jesus explained the significance of receiving and believing God's word in the parable of the sower. Jesus told a crowd, a sower went out to sow his seed, which seed being the word of God. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. Now the apostle sowed the seed among his listeners, and some did fall on good ground, some believed. However, some did not have confidence in the word of God. It fell on deaf ears and hardened hearts. These people chose not to yield to the word of God. For 30, year, for 30 years and in all the journeys, Paul preached first to the Jewish people, almost without fail. He was persecuted by them in a variety of terrible ways. Nevertheless, Paul loved his people and always went to them first. This is a great example of God's love for the Jews. A remnant would always believe. So Paul did not give up for all those years. At the time of these events, we see Paul coming to the conclusion of what in God's infinite wisdom, the rejection of Jesus by the majority of the religious leaders of the Jews opened the door for the Gentiles to believe and receive. So although his final word from Paul seems very harsh, we know that it really isn't. Now, question. What scriptural resource did Paul use in his conversations with the Jews concerning Jesus Christ? What spiritual resource did he use? And he used the law of Moses and the prophets. He used that which was familiar. He used that which people deemed as being of value. He used that which, uh, that's why it's important. That's why oftentimes you'll hear me, and you're going to hear it in a few minutes. Uh, you hear me with the Holy Land moments uh, from uh, the coalition of Christians and Jews. Why? Because uh, we need to reach people where they're at, not try to bring, not try to get them uh, to jump leaps and bounds from where they are to where we are. Oftentimes we speak to people from our level and they can't comprehend it because they have not passed the level that they're on. And if you ever try talking to somebody about a video game when they haven't even passed the level that you're talking about, it's very difficult to understand because you haven't seen that devil yet. You haven't seen that kind of joy yet. You haven't seen that kind of anything yet. Everything that you've seen is on a different level and it creates a different thing. So you're expecting something different. And when someone tries to tell you about that stuff, sometimes it's hard to receive can't get it real well because quite frankly it seems foreign to you but that's because you haven't been there once you've been there it's too com it's too common and too familiar and sometimes even in that we lose sight well let's just take you in uh, to this holy land moments and we'll be right back after this this is holy land moments with rabbi yakeel Eckstein, founder of the international fellowship of christians and jews happy thanksgiving my friends Today is one of America's most beloved holidays, a time when we come together to reaffirm the principle that the good we have received as a nation and as individuals is a gift from God. One thing I give thanks for is the continued faithful support for Israel and the Jewish people shown by the fellowship supporters. Today, I share with you words of thanks from some who have been helped by the generosity of those supporters. Tamar, a girl who attends a boarding school funded through our Guardians of Israel ministry, says, Thank you very much. You've given us the opportunity to be in a place that's helping us understand that there's a creator and a deeper meaning to life. Rachel Leah, an elderly Russian Jew who receives food and heat through the Isaiah 58 ministry, said, My parents often said that angels are here on earth. I was losing faith that they even existed in heaven, but you have restored my faith. What wonderful testimonies to the blessings our supporters have bestowed on the poor and the needy. Rabbi Heschel, a great Jewish 20th century theologian, once said that gratitude is the only response that can sustain us through life's ups and downs. He summed up the need for giving thanks to God in this way. 
It is gratefulness which makes the soul great. This Thanksgiving, may our hearts be filled with gratefulness for God's many blessings. You've been listening to another Holy Land Moment with Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein. To receive a free Israel the Beautiful 2013 calendar, visit us at holylandmoments.org. Gospel, united to save. It's the Guts Gospel Show, a variety talk show with a Christian view. With your host, Nikki B, featuring open discussion, event spotlight, and special guests. Tune in weekday for the midday show at 3.30 p.m. The Guts Gospel Show. This commercial is sponsored by Rhythmic Gospel Network. I'm a witness with our friends gospel filtrations right here on guts we had uh, give thanks always getting ready to transition and we hope that you'll stick with us 877-217-5375 that's 877-217-5375 thanks so much for tuning in happy thanksgiving and it's time for you to become a witness I'm Nikki V, hoping you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Join us, 877-217-5375. Whatever the problem, Jesus will be there. He will restore whatever you say. Fifteen twenty AM WEXY Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. A service of Multicultural Broadcasting Incorporated. Did you know that every employer is required to verify your employment eligibility? So if you're job hunting, go online to SelfCheck, where you can confirm your eligibility before your next employer does. SelfCheck gives you the confidence of knowing your government records are in order. Go to USCIS.gov backslash self-check and apply with confidence. That's USCIS.gov backslash self-check. Self-check is a service of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services and E-Verify. The following is a paid program. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host guest and callers and not necessarily those of WEXY, its staff or management.